Okay. So disruption. That man who so carefully put the microphone back, I've disrupted his work there. Okay. Uh, nothing else really to say. Oh, the ultimate question. Okay. So what I'm going to discuss is the ultimate question. It's not so much as whether there's a God and why we're all here and what the meaning of life is. No, it's quite. It's something much more important than that. Uh, it's something which should really occupy the thoughts of all of us, and that's which is the best James Bond. <laughs> uh, I think, of the official Bonds, that Roger Moore is the best, they're depicted, preventing Barbara Back from speaking. Then I thought, what about if we look further afield? All we've got here is Dick Barton, special agent, He's got his Bond girl of his own, that's Snowy White. He's got a, a sports car, he's a snappy dresser, and there are villains who have their own diabolical tools. No top hat for these fellows, no. We've got an accordion. <coughs> yes, an accordion. Swarthy looking. 1949 this is, what do you expect? We've also got a villain. The diabolical Foracada who's got Dick Barton tied up there. And Dick Barton also has many excellent quips, including, I must warn you, for Ricardo, the indemnity on murder is not a slight one. <laughs> Here's the main villain. His plan was to turn Blackpool Tower into a kind of enormous sonic transmitter to melt the brains of the British populace. Which is what he's doing. Ultimately, though, Dick Barton's Bond girl just wasn't really up to scratch. The beer-obsessed Snowy White is definitely no Carol Bouquet. So I had to rule out Dick Barton in the end, and I began to look further afield. With regret, because there he is, Sir Roger, looking extremely cool in back-projected glory. <laughs> Eyebrow ready to raise. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I began to think about alternatives, and I thought about an unofficial Bond. There's David Niven. He had some good lines too. He had excellent plans, which were including get out of the bloody place before it blows up. <laughs> but ultimately, Casino Royale of 1967 was a real mess. And I began to think again about people who drink exotic drinks in beautiful locations with beautiful people like Sir Roger is doing there. And my thoughts turned to WC Fields. Here, drinking exotic drinks in an exotic location with, well, a person, anyway. And I thought, yeah, he's known for his drinking, he seems to do it all the time. We all know that Bond is a, a big drinker and he enjoys seducing women many, 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 many years. His junior, there he is enjoying moderate success with Carol Bouquet again. Look, she's obviously enjoying his attention there. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so, WC Fields, though. What was she called? They've forgotten, Susan Miller. He's enjoying the attentions of Susan Miller there and obviously enjoying some success, so definite, definite parallel with Sir Roger there. In fact, definite parallel. Here we have Sir Roger in a massive stunt sequence featuring an articulated fire engine. Surely, surely WC Fields can't have a sequence like that. Surely WC, oh, he does actually have. <laughs> A sequence with an articulated fire engine and in which he careers through the streets of San Francisco. He's actually on the same page as 007, but he's doing it with much more flair because he's got quite a smart hat on there. And you think, well, okay, Sir Roger, he's made an assault on a mountaintop monastery. Surely WC Fields couldn't do anything like that. There's Sir Roger having the advice of Topol there and hand friendly on his shoulder there. Come on, WC Fields. Yeah, here we are. This is more or less exactly the same situation. W.C. Fields finds himself on a mountaintop monastery with a beautiful woman who he tries to seduce. Have the Bond producers been watching W.C. Fields, I wonder? But then you think, well, W.C. Fields couldn't fall out of an aeroplane without a parachute and survive as Bond does. That couldn't possibly happen. He's just not aerodynamic enough. There's Bond falling out. I think you can just see Jaws there. Poor old Richard Keel just died recently. Oh, actually he does, but W.C. Fields doesn't only fall out of the aircraft, he also manages to retrieve the bottle of whiskey that he dropped. <laughs> if anyone should be Bond, probably it should be W.C. Fields. This final slide 
It's nearly a serious point. <laughs> Almost. Bond often tries to pretend that he is a serious spy, and that these are serious spy films. They're not, though. W.C. Fields, on the other hand, never pretends that he is serious. He's always well aware that he is part of a franchise that is W.C. Fields. And so I give you, way over time, <laughs> W.C. Fields as the best Bond. <laughs> <laughs>